And we're back here at the 2016 BCA Pool League Wisconsin State Championships. A match between Steve Ernest and David Zug. And uh, looks like David has a advantage, 56% according to Fargo rate, even though both have a race to six. The first break. Uh, this will be the silver division now, I am being told. So this is a race to six. Um, both set of balls have uh, about an equal chance of run out here. He goes ahead and plays that combination on the open table to take solids. I think that's probably was uh, the wise choice there. The, Seven ball sitting in such a way that he has an opportunity to maybe break out that four and a five, or uh, if he elects to do that, down at that other end of the table. the three ball to the other corner. All he has to do is want to go forward with the one and then that lets him have the breakout. He might also elect right here to just go ahead and use the five ball to break it out. Uh, shoot the five and uh, leave the one as kind of a safety valve. Now he's going to go ahead and shoot the one here I think. Didn't get into the clusters. You know, I think I might have used that five ball on that shot to, to try to break that four ball out. So he got enough of the five to draw here and I break don't the think four? So. I don't believe so. I'm not even sure he can has enough of the five to be able to cut it in. He says, I'm going to try the five in that corner. Oh. I think if he'd have played it a little slower, he had it. Well, and, but not much on the four. Yeah, exactly. It, there was a point where... Um, Diminishing returns. That four ball was <laughs> not not going to be in a, a kind spot for him in any event. Watch out for the double hit here. He gets away from the double hit, but he scratches in the other corner. Mm. Well, I'm guessing. It, I'm not sure if that four ball passes by the 10 clean or not now. If that other stripe is out of the way, if not, we'll, we'll be able to tell real quick here because uh, he's going to break it out. Yeah, it should be able to draw back and break it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, it, if he could, if it went clear into the corner, that probably would have been the shot. But obviously, it doesn't since that's. Yep, there you go. Well, he's got to get down table. Probably wants to be on the right half of our table, which is. Uh, in order to have a nicer angle for the eight. And he got there. Oh, he's, he's left himself a nice shot. Yeah, he's on the reel a little bit, but eh, he's not happy he's on the reel completely, but he's left himself a very makeable shot here. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, he rushed it a little bit, I think. Yeah. Rushed it a little bit, and so therefore that has uh, given his opponent a chance to come up here. No real problem balls. Yeah, this is pretty much uh, point to point here. You would think. Yep, as they say, connect the dot pool. A little easier to connect the dots from the booth than on the <laughs> table sometimes, but... Uh, He overcuts oh. the ball. Mm. Boy, wow. he overcuts the ball. Yeah, first first game jitters for both players. Well, and that match ended, and I'm not sure if they were warming up on another table, but they didn't get to just hit any balls on this table. So already, uh, 
we have a winner and uh, raised to six here. David takes that one to nothing lead and that going to uh, increase his chances according to Fargo rate even a little bit more. He's now uh, pretty much a two to one favorite over Steve. The 2016 BCA Pool League Wisconsin State Championships, Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. And uh, as we came in on, uh, most of us got in on Tuesday night, it was raining cats and dogs, as they say. And yesterday it was windy. Uh, we played scotch doubles inside, so we didn't have to worry about that. But uh, today looks uh, pretty sunny out. Nice day for some pool inside, of course. Some great action. This is the men's silver division on table one. I'm Gennaro Vasquez. Ricky Bryant is with me. We have a bird's eye view about uh, 15 feet over table one. Yeah, we have a really nice uh, commentating booth here, which we don't always have at every venue we go to. Yeah, this is uh, it's really nice. It, uh, raised a little bit so we can get a real real clear perspective of most of the action hear the comment good break huh? yeah I got two two balls on the break I believe yes I think the Probably. challenging part of this is going to be that there's not what it, you would call like a really great starter shot I mean he has the 11 down to the corner. He has a three ball on the side. So he has a shot at both sets of balls, but not really what you would want as your starter shot, <laughs> I would think, off of a wide open table. But let's see what he elects to do. Both sets of balls are sitting pretty good, so um, it's more or less a preference over which one he'd rather shoot. That 11 does look a little bit easier, probably. And so he uh, turns the table over to Steve Ernest. Steve comes up to the table. Yep, and we're sitting with five solids on the table and six stripes and an open table. Kind of a chance to be able to uh, get back in the groove after the uh, overcutting that ball in the last game, the first game. Gonna take the solids. Kind of skims off the eight ball to give himself a nice position on the one ball here. And probably just draw this back out two rails at least in order to middle of the table for a shot. Oh, missed the cut again. Yeah, he did. Um, Don't think he left a whole lot. First stripes. He's got the. Is that the 14 in the side? 11 in the corner. He's awful close on the nine. If he wanted to play the nine. That's a. I'm not sure if he can get that 15 ball. He's shooting it like he can. 14. Yeah. Is that the 14 or 15? They got it in the side. Sometimes with the Cyclops balls, it's not, uh, it's a yeah. little <laughs> difficult to, for some of us who've been used to the uh, traditional balls, a little challenging. Here comes the 12 ball. Not setting too bad right now. So we'll see how he comes off of this one. Well, his, he, he's got a big problem in that 10 ball, but wow, oh, wow, did he leave himself a nice shot for that 11. Yeah. Yikes, I mean, that was a, that was not an easy shot. He had to really kind of get that ball all the way down to the end of the table. Now he can just kind of go forward for the 10. Yep. Kind of left himself on the 50-yard line here. Yep. But he can play it in the side. Um, he can elect to uh, go ahead and play it straight in, which is what I'm guessing he's going to do. 
Oh, and he missed. Oh, he rushed that one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I even wasn't sure he was ready to shoot when he fired. I thought he was still looking. Well, you kind of—it <laughs> looked like if he was in—if if he was in his stance, I'd be surprised. I think he kind of shot that one almost as he was getting down into his stance. You're right. That ball's drifting, 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 but yeah. he gets over a shape on yeah, on the seven there. That's another example of how great bad boys have these tables leveled and set up and out in weekly leagues. One of those like that you could end up you, in the side <laughs> pocket. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Depends yeah, on who's bumped the table lately. You're not going to see too many. Ooh. It just nudges that eight ball. But. Uh, well, he only has has the five. And pocket the, the five down to the other corner and. Tie this match up. So Steve with a chance to tie the match up, and uh, he does just that. On table one, we're at the 2016 BCA Pool Leagues Wisconsin State Championships. Men's Silver Division action we're watching here. The first match, we saw the Gold Division, this the Silver Division. I'm Janeiro Vasquez. I'm here with Ricky Bryant at the Chula Vista Resort in Wisconsin, Dallas, Wisconsin. You, have you been uh, to Chula Vista Resort before, Ricky? No, this is my first visit here, and I'm really impressed with the resort. It's a Wisconsin Dallas is a nice town, and this Chula Vista Resort is a nice reflection of that. Wisconsin Dallas has kind of become somewhat known for its water parks, and Chula Vista has an indoor and an outdoor water park. Did you see that giant slide on the outdoor water park? I did, and, and, and I also, with the cold air and the, the breeze we had yesterday, I, I presume the pool was heated because I saw people out swimming outside. <laughs> well, it's still a little early here in Wisconsin, I would think, for most to uh, to brave that, but... Uh, Let's see here. Oh, that was a ball spread really well. But uh, didn't make a ball. So he turns the table over to Steve, uh, David. Steve does. And uh, I think even though the five ball is a little bit of trouble, I still think solids might be better here simply because uh, we got a ball tied up over by the four ball there. Calling the four ball. Doesn't want to push that nine too far over there. Now he got away with that. So the six ball now. Probably go ahead and take that seven ball. Just leave himself right on the rail, which he does. Now he wants to get an angle on this one ball so he can get back down table. So he, he'll probably go forward with this one a little bit, maybe go forward a foot or so, so then that way he can have a nice natural angle to cut the one ball into the corner pocket past the 14 there and get back down table. Maybe a foot and a half. <laughs> Still good shape, though. So here he goes. He's got an, a natural cut. Probably, I guess, what I would estimate to be about half a pocket for the one ball. And beautiful. He ends up a little funny, though. Um, caught the eight ball on the way down, uh, which was one of the dangers of that shot. So he's got a... He can definitely cut the two ball. Um... Cue ball is going to hit that 11, so trying to navigate this is going to be a little tricky. I think what he here, <laughs> I think he's going to shoot the two ball, try to go off the 11, and use the 15 as a stopper. Let's see. No, he's not.
I didn't hear what his call was there, but I didn't either. All right. Well, David comes up now. Scores tied one to one. David is estimated by a Fargo rate to have a slight advantage to being the victor in this match. Yeah, at 55 to 45 is almost a coin toss. I did say a slight yeah, advantage. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're and, right, though. And, and, and I'm realize. still, and, and I think everybody, we're still adjusting to uh, uh, Fargo rate and... Uh, and the anticipation from what we see from it, I think it's going to be a great improvement uh, uh, for pool and moving forward. Uh, I'm kind of helping, surprised helping by this shot here. He's, he's shooting the 15 ball in a bang shot. Yeah. Wow, he must have been pretty confident about that bang shot because he had easier choices. check his credentials he may be a banker from kentucky <laughs> perhaps uh, th that was a really risky shot though because if he does not make that ball he sells out and opens up the table that was a pretty gutsy pretty gutsy call he looked very comfortable executing. He, he sure did and he looked like he was born born to shoot that shot so now he he can shoot the 10 ball if he wants Fell pretty nice on that one. Everything's setting pretty good right here. But we did see him overcut a ball earlier. So. You know what? I think I would almost shoot this 12 ball right now. Draw it back out for the 11. The balls are sitting in such a way that uh, really those are his toughest balls at this point. Yep. And Perfect. He, yeah, he shoots uh, coming around to this end of the table, but I think it's just to grab a chalk. I, Wow, yeah, I, yeah. Oh. the 11 ball is definitely the right shot in oh, my absolutely. opinion to shoot here. Absolutely. Yeah, 14 is sitting in. Oh, oh, he overcuts the ball. My goodness. Wow. I'm pretty well guessing he'd love to have that one back. can just kind of float this ball forward a little bit and uh, well, he's he has a chance to so he'll he can draw it out uh, two rails he can kind of thin slice it put load it up with inside English and come back out for the eight ball which Ooh. is what he tried to do but uh, he yep and uh, bobbled it yeah. And popped it back out. Well, these uh, these pockets, you have to play the ball true. They're they're not going to let you. Yep. They're not going to let you uh, use the Cliff Notes version of the ex of the test here. They're going to make you. They're going to test you. Played that very nicely. Yes. And uh, he can come out. He has an option of loading up with inside English and spinning it off this bottom rail or coming out two rails. He elects to go ahead and play the ball to the middle of the table. Make a bull shot on this eight ball. He hits that one very clean. So, well, he finds himself up two to one now in this race to six. It's the 2016 BCA Pool League Wisconsin State Championships. Steve Ernest takes a two to one lead. There we go. The, the Fargo rate flips. And there you go. Yes, indeed. 59% chance now. Steve Ernest is a uh, Going to prevail in this match according to Fargo, right? Trying to remember how David broke last time. I'm pretty sure he broke from the middle. 
Let's see if he elects to do that again. And he's breaking from the side here. Looks like he's aiming for the second ball, which is what he hits. Hits that nine ball, and the uh, five ball pops into the corner pocket, so comes out of that pretty well. Now I think if that one ball is, uh, if he addresses that one ball, those solids look pretty good. Stripes look good too. Only reason why I think solids might look a, a, just a hair better is because that 12 ball is not sitting in a very good spot. He may uh, try to play this combo right now and uh, pocket the one. Or he can shoot the two, spin it off the reel, kind of nudge that 12 ball out of there. Still open table. And I'm amazed, as you pointed out, that he could have played a 12-1 combo with the open table on the break, and a lot of players forget that in our league. They overlook that option. Correct. Uh, you know, as, as you know, Ricky, the, the only, you know, there are some leagues where you can use the eight ball first in a combination CS under CSI rules. Uh, that is not the case. Right. Not that that played a role here, but <laughs> just to, in general. You know, it's really interesting. Yesterday during the Scotch doubles, um, they had CSI changed the rules where you could consult with your partner, and that was uh, pretty interesting to watch. Made it, it seemed to make it a lot more fun, uh, and the players had an, an enjoyable day, I felt like. When it really split up play, too. Well, he, Steve tried to play that triple combo, and that two ball, that thing is not going down without a fight, I'll tell you that. It does not seem to want to go into that pocket, but... Uh, Well, now, without a doubt, it seems like solids are probably the balls of choice, even though that seven ball sitting in a little bit of a precarious spot. It does, it, you can find a home for it, but it's uh, probably the toughest ball on the table. Um, Played that one to the wrong side of the pocket, but still uh, found its way home. ball goes in the hole. Now you would think you would want to yeah, take care way. of that uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. You know, th if, if this were me right now, I would heavily, heavily consider playing that seven off that nine on the side right here on this shot because you can use a little bit of draw to come back for the one ball in the corner. I think he's thinking about it. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think it goes in the corner pocket down where the 12 is here. I don't think it goes where the 9 he up in the other corner. He called it in the side, I believe, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a I think that's a pretty savvy shot there. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah, that Probably, if, if it were me, I would have shot that with a little bit of draw, just simply because I would have wanted to avoid that 15 ball. But yeah. I think he was trying to float back over to this side so he could play the six either in the corner or in, in the side where he just made that ball. Just didn't quite hit it hard enough. Yep, yeah, and he's not set good with two balls on the table. He's not set on either one of them with it. It's almost no shot on the one without having to go to a rail or a kick. Well, six ball, six ball can be pocketed. Um, can't tell if it can be pocketed up in the, what is our right-hand corner, uh, but it definitely goes in the left-hand corner. Problem is that really, he's got to turn the cue ball loose here. And uh, yep. 
if he goes to the right hand corner you've got the danger of the side pocket and uh, goes left hand corner and turns the cue ball loose he's running at that eight ball well the one ball is sitting in such a way that it can be made from a number of spots because you can go cushion first but it is a uh, you know turn that cue ball loose anything can happen absolutely and he does try it. He, I guess it did go up in that upper right-hand corner. Wasn't even sure that it did initially. Well, Steve does come up, and uh, he has some chances here. Not uh, not the greatest position um, some of those balls are sitting. One of the ways he could address that 12-ball situation is to play something off the reel off the one. That would open up that pocket. Right. He has, kind of has that chance. Now, I think uh, the nine ball is going to be his first shot here, though. Yeah. And he overcut. Yeah, he's been overcutting a couple of his shots here. Well, he's got a... I'll t tell you the tough part of this shot is controlling the cue ball because he's going to have to cut that nine very thinly. Or the uh, yeah, six very thinly. And so that cue ball is going to uh, the cue ball is going to want to go on a little joy ride here. And he's going to take it. Yeah, he does. And oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, and twelve and one both moved and not to his advantage. And now I'll tell you what, that is sitting in a that is not sitting in a fun spot for. Yeah. Trying to kick at it because if the nine wasn't there, he could he'd have a, a pretty decent kick, but he's got almost blockers. Goes two rails and Ooh. fouls. That's a foul. Yeah. Made the one, but fouled. <coughs> Steve Ernest c confirming with uh, David that that was in fact a foul. David says, yes, sir, it was. So Steve coming in with ball in hand here. Balls are sitting fairly open. Well, he's just really got to kind of get in a groove here. I sort of feel like he has rushed a couple of shots and missed, and if you just take his time, and he can run this out and make it a two-to-two -two match here. Yeah, he came back from the overcut in the last frame and uh, took that one to go ahead two to one. And he, yeah, he didn't leave didn't leave an easy shot on the eight, but he has left a. Well, you got to think that David's just happy to get back to the table here. Absolutely. With those balls, the way they were sitting. Um, and uh, he's actually taking a moment to, to take a good look at this one. I think that's a good idea. Sometimes when you're not expecting to get back up at the table, worst thing you can do is just jump up and shoot. And he makes it. Yep. Now we're at two apiece. Yeah. And we'll see how the Fargo rating changes. Race to six, two apiece. We're at Table 1, the Men's Silver Division at the Wisconsin State Championships, the BCA Pool Leagues, the CSI. Tables done by Bad Boy Productions. We're at the Chula Vista Resort and Water Park in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. So you said you've never been to Wisconsin Dells. Never been to the Dells. I've... Uh I've always uh, considered coming over, especially during the Christmas season, to do some Christmas shopping and things. I haven't been over here, though. It's they have uh, things here called the ducks. I'm not sure if you're familiar yes, what that is. Yes, but, uh, uh, you see those in uh, a lot of a uh, lot of different cities. Uh, the, the ducks uh, are an interesting way to uh, tour a place. And our coin flip on the Fargo rating flipped to David after that win. And it's now 55-45 in David's favor. It's kind of gone back and forth a little bit here um, as they exchange games. 
neither player really aggressively stepping up and uh, taking control. It's sort of gone back and forth a little bit here. Yeah, into the fifth rack, I would say oh. nerves are out of play other than just standard uh, competition. You know, I just can't help but feel uh, from watching this match that it, the way that these players are shooting the balls that maybe they're not used to playing on pro cut pockets. It's a, an assumption on my part. Um, but Or not used to playing on diamonds. Yeah, that's... You really have to... You really have to uh, play that ball to the right side of the... Uh, as they call it, the pro side of the, the right. pocket and... Um, give yourself the best opportunity to be able to to, po to pocket a ball. Yeah, they don't allow you to. Uh, the diamond tables and the pro cut pockets, uh, you don't get the option to cheat the pocket as much as you do on some other tables. Trying to nudge those uh, trouble balls out there. Catches it's just a thin piece of that 11. I don't know, hard to tell if that uh, really helped him out very much. But one thing it didn't do is leave himself a very fun shot. He's got a thin cut on that 10, but you know what? There's a scratch there. That's the reason why it's a scratch is because you thin cut off that 10, and it, that cue ball, that's four ball that's near that corner pocket, makes that a big pocket. Absolutely. Well, I'm Gennaro Vasquez. I'm here with Ricky Bryant. Table one of the Wisconsin State Championships, the BCA Pool Leagues. Have this match between Steve and David, a race to six. It's kind of flip flop back and forth a little bit. The Fargo rating has as far as who has the uh, largest advantage to uh, win the match, and yeah, he's not even going to cut that ball. I think he wants to stay away from that scratch. He's going to try and bank it. And he fired at it, but uh, missed it. Well, I'll tell you, I think one of the About a diamond short best things he did, uh, one of the best things he did there was tie up that five ball <laughs> to make things even a little bit more difficult as uh, he comes up, as uh, Steve comes up to shoot here. And he's called a safety here. Not so much that he doesn't have shots. It's just as a matter of that uh, the balls are sitting in such a precarious way that and he tries to slide right up on that ball. And I think he's done on that six. I think he's done a pretty good job of doing it. So yeah, he's going to have to kick. He's calling the 10 ball. But uh, let me tell you, that, that's a tall order. <laughs> that 10 ball is not very accessible, even with a one real kick. Oh. Well, he's going to. Well, he could get better contact than I thought he could. I thought they had him locked behind it. He may have to shoot this 5 ball. If he can play the seven, that's the shot, but it's hard to say if he can. Yeah, I believe he's got a shot on the seven. It's a little, yeah, I'm not so sure. <laughs> that ball looks now, from that perspective, it looks like it might be at least partially blocking. Well, you definitely cannot, uh, unless you put some kind of little zhoosh on it or something like that <laughs> to get around that five ball in order to pocket the, the six or the deuce. I think he he has a chance of throwing the five in the side, but he'd have to shoot at it in just the right way. 
He's going to kick at the seven ball to a short reel kick up to the corner. That's not a terrible shot. But that four ball, it, we mentioned that four ball being up there. It makes it a big pocket. In, the, in one pocket, they call that side reels. So it's a, you have an opportunity for that ball to um, get up there and potentially even go off that four ball. Well, he definitely does not want to tie it up again, but uh, that's pretty much unfortunately is what has happened here. Yeah. So David comes up, scores tied 2-2 two to two in this race to six, men's silver division, queuing over that uh, 14 ball. He's still got a, a few things to work out here. I got kind of an odd angle here. You make the ball, but trying to get back on the 10. No, uh, look at how he left it, though. I think... Yeah, and he said he blew that one. That's, uh, that, yep, he, he tried to use that four ball to make that pocket big, and he moved the four out, but he missed. Well, that the four was partially blocking the pocket, too, yeah. so that, you know, he didn't hit that just right. There was a chance of that. He may have to put a little curve on this ball to get around that ten ball. Yeah, it looks like he's shooting straight at it. So combination shot coming up here. And drops two balls. And I don't think he really <laughs> wanted to drop both of them. Yeah, he, he said, <laughs> I didn't want that. <laughs> that's really, that's not the worst case scenario, though. No, no, he's. I'll tell you, I think a good shot here would be if he pockets the four in the side, he can kind of come off, maybe use a little draw and uh, come off that what is our bottom rail here and, and maybe bump out that trouble ball. Probably what he's looking at. And looks like he's, yeah, that is what he's doing. Oh, and just misses. Yeah. Uh, ball. Oh. Stretched. Wow, that was uh missed the breakout, and by missing that, it scratched in the opposite side. Yeah, the, I I don't think it scratches if it catches a little oh, piece no, of the no, ball. No, no, I don't so. think so either. I well, he's he's at the other end of the table from where his 15 ball is. He's got to shoot that 10. I mean, there's not much doubt about that. And the problem is, is that the eight ball is not. Boy, that's not in an enviable position to be able to get shape off of that 15. If he if he gets out of here, he's going to earn it. It's, he's got to play some good shape play here. Oh Boy. my goodness! He called the scratch on himself. I I think he had a couple of options there, and I think he went to the table with both of them in mind and didn't make a selection, and uh, ended up following the ball and scratching. This is the men's silver division in this Wisconsin State Championship. Steve uh, taking a second look at getting up off the shot, taking a second look at this here. Fargo Rates says he is just an ever so slight underdog, but uh, boy, you have to like his chances right now. He's of, uh, pulling out this game. Taking his one trouble ball, which is the three, and everything else is out in the open. Well, you know, here's the thing, is that he's missed a couple of shots that I would think even he would say he probably shouldn't have missed. That starts to play a little bit of tricks on your mind. You know, you just kind of start, I think even there, he maybe, you know, oh. drew that ball a little bit further because he's yes. trying to play it safe or, you know, it's like kind of that self-doubt sort of creeps in a little bit. I think the right shot here is to uh, 
know, it's what, the right shot is whatever it is he's most comfortable with. And that, that does seem like that would be the, the one. So he's going to pocket this ball, probably just float off this rail here for the ball on the side. And he looks like he's loading it up a little bit. He might be coming out two rails. No, nope, he does just go ahead and... Uh, the way he was queuing <laughs> on that ball, I thought he was going to load. It looked like he might be loading up on it, but uh, he ended up just flowing it off that top rail. And so he does take the lead here. Three to two, halfway to his race to six. Steve and David battling it out. It's been, this match has been back and forth and back and forth. Uh, Steve Ernest raises his odds up just a touch. 61% uh, now uh, favored to win the match, according to Fargo Rate. And table one is uh, in play. Watching several <coughs> uh, matches go on around us in uh, this event. We're using the CSI, BCA Pool League rules. spread that time for the most part mm -hmm. although kind of in this uh, lower left hand quadrant on our screen the balls did stay a little bit more clustered than the rest of the table we made three balls on the break that's not uh, you know I think uh, you know, if he elects to take stripes here, good shot. Even though he's got a bridge over the 10, would be maybe shoot that 13 and try to nudge out that those two little trouble balls over there. They're not really trouble balls, but it's not. I've seen easier combinations than that. And he's going to elect to take solids here. Yep. And I don't think he fell very well. Nope. And I think he did that from the standpoint that he had to, he had dropped two solids and one stripe, and I, he didn't want to give up that uh, extra ball advantage on the, even from where they were laying. And that's, that's sometimes an error I see players do is uh, on that open after the break, the, the table is open until you legally pocket a ball or a player legally pockets a ball. Well, Steve has a 3-2 to two lead, and he's, I think he's looking at playing a safety here. He's just going to bump this 15, leave it stuck on the 12. And uh, David immediately comes up and starts looking at playing a safety back. Another player wanting to blink first on this rack. <laughs> it's a... Uh, David had a chance off the break to uh, try to do something, and his first shot after didn't leave himself um, a very nice leave. So he he's consequently looking for the bridge. Yeah, he's he's. I think he pretty well has himself set on playing a safety here, but he's sort of shooting it in a, in an odd way. Oh, no. that's going to be a foul. Yes. Oh. And the, the, reason, the reason why that was a foul was because even though he... So the tip came over the 14 ball. It, it didn't necessarily provide contact um, on the cue ball as he first shot. However, his hand or the cue bumped the 14 ball. The cue ball comes off the rail and then went back to the space where the 14 ball, or I'm sorry, the 15 ball was originally occupying. Is that the 14 ball? <laughs> I, I guess it's, it's the 14 ball. I think ball. it's the 14. Yeah, where that 14 ball was originally uh, occupying. So 
So consequently, that is what produced the foul. You know, I have to say, Ricky, um, uh, both you and I are, are, in addition to the commentators for this match, both CSI certified referees. And uh, the sportsmanship I've seen in these matches has been really uh, quite impressive. They're, when players have a foul that they commit, they've called it on themselves. I haven't seen any instances where there's been a foul where players, you know, there's been any... Uh, doubt or question about it they've called it on themselves and even when their opponent didn't notice it and they've uh, they've said yeah I fouled they kind of get into that one a little bit and left himself sort of a funny angle on the 13 he's gonna have to cut it over into what is our right hand corner pocket the control uh, speed control for the cue ball on this one's going to be somewhat important because he's he has to hit this one with some speed, I think. And that, as opponent says, nice shot. And that, that was a nice shot. Yep. Squeeze that ball into the corner pocket and held the cue ball reasonably well for as much angle as he had there. And finishes it off by playing the eight ball on the side. And, uh, well, that uh, yeah. definitely is going to tip things in his favor statistically now. Yep. And extends his lead to a two-game lead at 4-2. to two. Fargo rate had him at a 61% uh, advantage to win the match based on their ratings before we uh, finished that game. Now, well, there we go. As you can see, almost a three to one chance now Fargo Reid says that Steve has to win this match over David. And I believe if I remember correctly, coming into the match, David was was favored slightly. Uh, yes, I do believe that is correct. Coming in, there was there was a slight advantage. Um, I think 55-45 or something to that effect. It was minimal, <laughs> yes, but uh, you know, it's uh, so far it's played out a little bit on the table so that uh, Steve has had an op some opportunities that I'm sure David uh, would rather really have back but uh, such is the way it is one player's opportunity is based usually on another player's uh, wish they had done something a little differently well, a dry break yeah, there there have been uh, several dry breaks here on this table. Um, these balls are are spread. There are no two balls touching on the table. However, there's a f fairly large uh, congregation of balls sort of around the spot. I think they can be navigated here. This 13 ball, then he's got the 14 to the other. Uh, he would really... I think he would really have loved to have had that 14 ball there. He's playing it like a one pocket player. Just play this closest ball, short shots, not moving one end of the table to the other. Well, he does have the 15 ball here. He could shoot the 9 ball next. Uh, Interesting shot. Uh -huh. I think he did that so he could play the 10 in the corner. Has he got enough of the 10 to go to the corner? Or has he got to go to the side? I do believe he does. I think he's got to go to the side. Yeah. Good call, Ricky. Yeah, it does look like he uh, went to the side there. Yeah, he's got the 9. Just that one shot where he got a little bit offline, and then he's still working to try and get back in line. This is the men's silver division of the 2016 BCAPL Wisconsin State Championships Chula Vista Resort in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. Steve Ernest taking on David Zwiegi and uh, 
Steve has that 4 to 2 lead. Tries a cut on the 11. And yeah, he's, he's not happy with it. It was, I'll tell you, that was not the easiest shot because he's kind of at the 50 yard line. He's cutting away from the pocket. So, um, you know, that. And if he'd gone for the nine at the bottom of the table and missed it, he would have broken everything out and opened the table up really big for his yeah, opponent. Yeah, I, I think his frustration was maybe more with the leave initially than, than missing the shot because right. that was not, uh, all in all, that was not a fun shot. Well, he got out of line a couple of shots before he got to the 11 and... And it's just once you get out of line, trying to get back in play is... Uh, that can be can a little be tricky, a for sure. Yes. Well, Steve is kind of thinking about a lot of things here. That five ball, I'm not saying it can't be cut in the side, but it looks a little high to uh, to be played in the side for, for my perspective. Um, could possibly play a combination. Could then cut the four ball, but... Uh, there is still a congregation of balls down here at this end of the table that uh, I, I'm not sure either player is really that excited about. He doesn't have anything that's really a, a gimme or an, a real open I think pocket. he's going to play a combination here. 5-3 yeah, combo in a corner. Which is a tough one with the balls that fall apart from each other. And... He misses. You know, I'm a little surprised he didn't somehow elect to place a safety and just nudge out that 2-6 a little bit. Yep. Um, not that it would have done that much for him, but it just would have freed up his balls a little bit more. Um, perhaps he has something else in mind for that. Well, you know, coming out of the chair after the dry break and... Uh well, you, one thing you can definitely tell, though, is that uh, as this match progresses now, both players kind of tightening up a little bit. Neither one, they kind of both came out firing and <laughs> trying to run out racks and shooting bank shots and stuff. And uh, now they're they're really paying much more close attention to um, each shot. Well, he's fallen, in my estimation pretty good for this nine ball as far as uh, his ability to go ahead and pocket this ball and break out the 14 ball. It's all the way down the table and it is a very thin shot. So you're going to really want to play this to the right side of the pocket and he didn't. Um, unfortunately he got the cushion, the corner cushion got in the way a little bit and therefore he gives Steve an opportunity to come back to the table. And again, he doesn't, doesn't really leave Steve what you would call a great starter shot. Um, he's got that combination 3-4. He's got the 5 ball, but that is like a half a pocket for that 5 ball. You take the 5 in the corner. With the back cut. Oh, he hit that nice. Executed Ooh, wow. beautifully. Yeah, he did. He hit that very nicely. But no real reward for position. He's got the two in the other corner. I remember, this is the guy that banked that. He chose a bank yeah. shot that almost exactly that same bank shot in a way um, earlier in the match over a cut shot. And he's uh, calling the bank again. Yep. Yeah. Is that the six? Uh, I believe that is the six, yes. Yeah. He just called the bank. We'll see if there's any money in the bank. And he shoots it a little short. Yep. And I think, I, I'm not necessarily so sure it was the angle, but it was the speed that he shot that with. Shooting it a little bit harder like that caused the, the angle to shorten up a little bit. I think if he had uh, maybe hit that just a little bit softer, it wouldn't have and to compress the cushion so much, and it would have got a little bit of result. Now he's shooting the nine ball. Oh, kind of gets into that one a little bit more than he really meant to, I'm sure. Yep. Because he has a tough back cut on this next ball. Not only that, that eight ball's moving, and that eight ball's going to be on the move. Um, 
Well, he missed it and, and missed the eight because he missed the ball. You know, yeah. though, I mean, if you're going to miss, that wasn't a bad miss simply yeah. because he put that ball right where blocking the rail for that seven ball. So yep. not, uh, not, you know, if there is such a thing as a good miss, I guess that, that was a good miss. Yeah, as there, or as they say, it was a, a two-way option there. Uh, ball finds its way home. And ball kind of put, it put up a little else. bit of a fight to <laughs> yeah. it, but it, it did go in the pocket. And we've seen a couple of times where these uh, pro cut pockets were uh, – Challenged the players and said, nah, I think we're going to turn that one back to you. Three ball goes in. Well, he does have ways to get at the seven, um, but he's going to have to play some really fine shape, especially right here. It's, this is a good example of he's he does not want to get on the wrong side of this two ball. He wants to be on what's going to be the hour left half of the table so he can get down the table yep. and, and that's just about perfect there so uh, he almost crossed over the the line where he wanted to be but he's he's sitting pretty good play shape for the one kind of cheated that one a fair amount you know he's got enough angle he has he could actually go into that seven yep. I'd, I'm not sure at this point he can roll it to the rail to play the seven up to the other corner. I'm not sure if he was playing for the breakout or if he was uh, if he was trying to play so he could make the one and then roll it up for the seven in the other corner. But at this point, um, I think rolling it up is not an option. He's going to have to, he might even be considering playing it off that 14 ball. I think he is. Yep. We'll tell when He's yeah. got to kind of turn this cue ball loose a little bit. And may very well go into the seven ball anyway. Oh. Interesting choice. Well, but he was obviously David immediately calls a safety. Yeah. Uh, I think he opened it up. Mm, that is a... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that is... It's a tight fit. That looks like that would be uh, quite a challenge to get that ball through there. So. See if he spins it in I and see goes no, for another bank. I see no advantage to pocketing this one, honestly. So he does go ahead and just well, let, but he left him a bank shot. Yep. Left him a bank shot. Not only did he leave him a bank shot, but that seven ball is sitting in such a way that it could be a stopper for the cue ball to so hold it for the eight ball. Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. Uh, he fired much harder than I was expecting. <laughs> uh, yeah. Moved. Well, I think you shoot the seven ball here first. At least I sure would. And now he'll just come off and just try to leave himself for the corner. Play it up there where that 14 ball is, I'm sure. Well, I would say from the speed that David fired that uh, bank shot that David was not comfortable with the bank. Yes, I think that's probably pretty safe to say. Oh, watch out. Cue ball. Oh, no, he's good. He's Ooh. good. I just get, I, I <laughs> can't tell you how many times <laughs> I've shot that poison <laughs> shot. So as my heart starts to flutter every time as that cue ball gets uh, headed toward that side pocket. But uh, he had just enough draw or, or uh, yeah, English to, to play it to the proper side of that ball. Yeah. Well, his last two breaks have been dry. We'll see how it comes this time. Men's Silver Division, Steve Ernest now. Fargo Rates says a 93% chance to win over David Zwiege. Well, well, we'll see. It's uh, 
being down five to two in a race to six, that uh, that is a that is definitely a hill to climb. But uh, that's there's a reason why we don't just uh, immediately award the match to somebody. There, David certainly has an opportunity to fight back. He's made some nice shots during this match. Um, you know, maybe he can find a groove, get himself back in this thing. This is the 2016 BCA Pool League Wisconsin State Championships. I'm Gennaro Vasquez. I'm here with Ricky Bryant. And, um, well, it's a dry break. Seen that uh, a fair amount here. A lot of dry breaks uh, from the players Well, this time the ball spread uh, pretty good. Uh, those solids are probably best, although that 11 ball sitting in a funny spot. Yeah, we have the uh, congregation of balls that moved you, down you, table to the kitchen away from... Uh, I think I might shoot that 10 ball. Well, he has a couple of options here. I think I might address that 11 ball right now. Shoot the 9 and break it out, or... Play the 10, but he's going to elect to pocket the 12, and boy, he did not put that in a position that uh, I think he wanted. Oh, he's going for the bank. Wow. I don't think he looked at the table close that time. He had options other than that. Well, you know, it, I can't, can't read his mind, but it may end up seeming like he's maybe a little frustrated uh, the way things have gone. Uh, in this match, yeah, to be to, to for his opponent to be on the hill. Well, and I think, you know, it it would seem that he probably, again, I'd have to ask him, but it seems like he probably would feel that he's had some opportunities here that uh, perhaps he would normally have taken advantage of. That in this case, he did not. Match isn't over yet, but you know, it's uh, Steve is definitely in a position of strength here so let's wait and see how it plays out if that three ball goes by the 11 which I believe it does I believe it does too um, I would probably want to shoot that thing as soon as possible so you have several balls on the table so you have uh, some safety valves well, he's got the seven relatively straight in on that seven. Yeah, I think that'll He's going to force it forward here yeah. a little bit. Hit that one nice. Kind of goes around. Shape on the four. And roll down for the three. Boy, I really, f I really feel like I would want to get that five ball out of there sooner. <laughs> but uh, he's electing to take it... Uh, Tries to break out and breaks the oh, five that's out. Oh, that was a great shot. Wow. And I think maybe he's got the five. In the yeah, he's got the five got for the side. He's got the five to three or the two. And then he, he's got options on all three. Well, he passed up the shot on the three. Maybe it's not quite as... Uh, oh. Caught just a little bit of the cushion as he was yeah. trying to shoot that in the side. On the pro cuts, the side pockets they can be they can be tricky caught just a little bit of the tip of that uh, cushion enough to uh, enough to give David a chance back at the table David looking to take full advantage of this opportunity Well, the 11 ball is going to be a little bit of a... He's going to try to draw it out of there a little bit. Hmm. And was, he's got good position. Well, he's on the rail. It's it's not a, it's a very makeable shot. Oh, he missed it. Yeah, that, I'll tell you, that being on that rail, shooting, you know, three-quarters of the distance down the table on a straight-in shot, that is... is a makeable shot is not a fun shot. And trying to play slow enough so that he's set for the eight. If, if the eight, ten. Another good point. He did have to take it forward there. Yeah. Steve 
at the table now, you got to think he's liking his chances. Gets us just a little kiss on that two ball. And lines up for the side pocket. He's having to cut it, put a little on it. But he played it with some speed and put it right down in the side. And the five ball, it's got a little angle on that uh, five ball. Not sure if he can hold it. He might tr elect to uh, play it two rails down here by the eight ball just so he can put a nice stroke into it. Or just one rail even. Yeah, he does go ahead and go two rails, two three, rails, three, three rails, rails back yeah. out. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. For the win. And this would be the sixth game for him. And so he wins it. Steve Ernest wins this match over David and the score of six to two.